país. Pero mañana nos vamos a dedicar tiempo para buscar Dios y servir de forma voluntaria. Tomorrow we're going to have an opportunity to worship even, to seek God out, and to remember the importance of uh, Martin Luther King in our country, in our society, and to recall that with our children, with a craft, with some activity pages, with some videos and songs, and then volunteer service for our community. We're going to distribute food to the hungry. We're going to sort out a wonderful donation of winter coats that we received and get them organized by sizes for boys and girls, men and women. We got lots of projects tomorrow. So if you're free tomorrow, don't just use it as a day off for MLK Day. Say, what can I do in DreamFest 2022 to keep that dream alive and to serve him? All right. Let's dedicate our hearts together this morning. Our call to worship, our prelude is lift every voice and sing. You've got it on this little paper here, English on one side, Spanish on the other. El preludio esta mañana, una canción, un himno que dice, alzar la voz, cantar, en cielo y tierra, sonar con armonías de libertad. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring with the harmonies of liberty. Jesus came to set us free from our sins and our past. Lift every voice and sing. Let's do it together this morning. If you know the hymn and you want to sing along with the video, you're welcome to do that. And again, we have the lyrics in English and Spanish. Tenemos la letra en inglés y español. Si conoce el himno y quiere cantar con el video, se puede hacer esto.
Would you pray with me? Oremos. That hymn speaks to us this morning, God. We do want to lift our voices to praise you. Este himno, Señor, sí nos toca el corazón, nos habla el corazón. Y queremos levantar nuestro voz, alzar nuestro, que, nuestro ser a ti, Señor, para alabar. As we go through this service this morning, God, may our focus continue to be only on you and our hearts be open continually to hear your voice. Que en este servicio, Señor, nuestro corazón quede abierto y nuestro enfoque sea siempre en ti. Receive this hour of our worship, God, and change us by this experience. Recibe, Señor, esta hora de adoración y cámbianos. Transformanos, Señor, por tu Espíritu. Por esta experiencia. We pray in your name. Tu nombre pedimos. Amen. If you're able to stand uh, comfortably, I invite you to rise and we're going to sing a hymn together. Holy, holy, holy. Our message this morning is about the holy life. And so it's important that we would sing this hymn today about the holiness of God. Nuestro himno esta mañana dice, Santo, Santo, Santo. Yo soy mi potente. Y es importante enfocarnos en la santidad de Dios en este día.
As I mentioned, this being a special commemorative weekend in our nation, uh, tomorrow a federal holiday for Martin Luther King Day, commemorating his birth and his significance to our country. Uh, we're going to have a short video, a recollection of the famous speech that he gave, I Have a Dream. So it'll be presented in English with Spanish subtitles. Este video se presenta en inglés con su título en español, recordando la vida del doctor Martín Luther King.
see it be a reality in the brotherhood of the whole world, the brotherhood of the family of God, where he's our father of all of us. Nuestro corazón es conmovido por esa presentación, porque vamos a experimentar esa hermandad de todas las razas, razas todas las naciones del mundo. We thank God for Dr. King knowing that that prophetic voice was sent, but it's, it's not complete. There's more to be done. We carry that message on. It only comes by God's grace and by his help and us submitting to him. Los cambios que deseamos experimentar en nuestro país, en nuestro mundo y en nuestro propio corazón solo se, se cambia con la ayuda de Dios y buscamos su ayuda. The hymn we're going to sing next says, My tribute to God be the glory. Just let me live my life. Let it be pleasing, Lord, to thee. That's what we want, is to live a life that pleases him. It's only possible by his help. Solo es posible vivir una vida que agrada a Dios con la ayuda de Dios y su Espíritu obrando en nosotros. To help us see the screen better, it might not be as familiar as the first hymn we sang. I'll, I'll uh, invite you to remain seated and we'll sing the words as they come on the screen. There's no voices on the video, it's just instruments. So it's for all of us to lift our voices and sing. Invito a todos a levantar nuestra voz para cantar este, esta canción. Thank you. 
queremos adorarle a Dios esta mañana con nuestros diezmos y ofrendas. Would you pray with me? Oremos. God in heaven, you are worthy. Padre celestial, tú eres digno. From the abundance that you've given us, we give back to you. From a heart of humility, acknowledging that you're the source, we give back to you. De la abundancia que nos has provisto, Señor, regresamos a ti algo con nuestro amor para ofrendarte. Por tu provisión, Señor, es suficiente y con corazón humilde entregamos a ti parte de lo que nos has dado. Bless everyone here, that the giver and those who may be unable to give today, to grow our faith in you, that one day your kingdom will come on this earth. Use and multiply these gifts to bring that to pass. Usa, Señor, estas ofrendas y, y diezmos, multiplícalos para que tu reino existe y que tu reino venga en esta comunidad. We ask this in your name. Amen. As the song plays, and if it's one you know you want to sing along, please come just a few at a time and bring your tithes and offerings to God's altar. They needed this prophecy 
from God this hard news because they were disobedient. They had allowed so much injustice and oppression to exist in Israel. Ellos habían dejado existir mucha injusticia y mucha opresión. So the message that I want to bring to you today is that God is calling us to a holy life and that has multiple dimensions. Dios nos está llamando una vida santa y eso tiene múltiples dimensiones. You don't hear the whole gospel if you are only hear it as an individual. And you don't hear the whole gospel if you only apply it to society, but it doesn't affect you. We need the whole gospel. Necesitamos el evangelio pleno. Si se escucha solamente individualmente y no reconoces que el evangelio tiene su afecto en la sociedad, falta algo importante. Pero si solo suponemos que el evangelio es para transformar la sociedad y nosotros individualmente no estamos afectados, falta también algo importante. So look at chapter 7 of Amos, capítulo 7 de Amos, verse 1. This is what the sovereign Lord showed me, Amos says. The Lord was preparing swarms of locusts. El Señor Omnipotente me mostró esta visión, dice el profeta Amos. Vi al Señor preparando enjambres de langostas. You know they have those 17-year locusts that come up out of the ground every once in a while. This past summer we heard them in the trees. Some years there's even more of them that you can't hardly walk on the sidewalk without crunching them under your feet and they just buzz so loud in the trees it's deafening. A veces en el verano aquí algunas langostas que salgan de la tierra después de estar enterrados por años y suenan tan fuertemente en los árboles que casi nos hagan sordos y a veces cubren el camino y los pisamos. They consume crops in other parts of the world. Here they just kind of bug us in the, in the trees and make a lot of noise. But in some parts of the world and in Bible times, when those locusts came, they would consume the harvest and the people would go hungry. And it was received as a judgment from God that something was wrong in the land. In los tiempos bíblicos, en otras partes del mundo, las, las langoscas, las langoscas, no, ¿cómo se dice? Langostas salen y comen la cosecha y la comida desaparece y la gente sufre de hambruno y lo consideran como un castigo de Dios. So verse 2, Amos cries out to God, Sovereign Lord, forgive. How can Jacob survive when he is so small? Versículo 2, exclame el profeta, Señor mi Dios, te ruego que perdones a Jacob. ¿Cómo va a sobrevivir si es tan pequeño? In verse 3, God responds to the cry of Amos. So the Lord relented. This will not happen, the Lord said. Versículo 3, Entonces el Señor se compadeció y dijo, dijo, Esto no va a suceder. We serve and we worship a merciful God. Servimos y adoramos a un Dios misericordioso. He doesn't punish us as we deserve, but he is long-suffering and desiring that all of us would experience his power in our life. Dios desea que todos nosotros experimentemos su poder en nuestra vida. Es misericordioso nuestro Dios. Verse 4. This is what the Sovereign Lord showed me next. The Sovereign Lord was calling for judgment by fire. El Señor Omnipotente me mostró entonces otra visión. Vi al Señor llamar a juicio con un fuego. I don't know if you've ever been around a house fire or a forest fire that's just consuming everything in its path. It is a terrible thing to behold. Es un, una cosa terrible ver un fuego fuera de control consumiendo una casa o un vecindario in different parts of our land we've seen on the news about the forest fires we've also seen the tragedy of house fires there was one in New York this past week when so many died our hearts go out to them 
and we can imagine what a horrible experience, just begin to imagine how horrible that would be. And this was what the prophet saw in the vision God gave him about judgment coming as a fire on a people, on a land, on a nation that had allowed injustice and oppression to thrive. Podemos imaginar, como hemos visto en las noticias, bosques llenos de llamas y aún en Nueva York o en Filadelfia unos fuegos, incendios y niños han muerto esta semana. Es algo horrible considerar y eso era la visión que el profeta recibió del Señor, una visión de un juicio con fuego. And so once again in verse 5, the prophet cries out to God, Sovereign Lord, I beg you, stop. How can Jacob survive? He is so small. Y exclamé, detente, Señor mi Dios, te lo ruego. ¿Cómo sobreviviría Jacob si es tan pequeño? In verse 6, so the Lord relented. This will not happen either. Versículo 6, entonces el Señor se compadeció y dijo, esto tampoco va a suceder. Then came a third vision, verse 7. This is what he showed me. The Lord was standing by a wall that had been built true to plumb with a plumb line in his hand. Versículo 7. El Señor me mostró otra visión. Estaba él de pie junto a un muro construido a plomo y tenía una cuerda de plomada en la mano. You see this picture of a crooked wall and there is the plumb line. I'm not an expert in construction or remodeling. Some of the guys here I know know how to wield a tool, know how to build a wall or do some framing. And how important is it that everything line up? If something's crooked, even by a little bit, the structure loses its integrity and is subject to fall. Imagina cuando hay construcción, un proyecto de construcción, si no está recto, según la línea y la plomada, si está fuera de rectitud, toda la estructura será fácil de tumbar. And so God is saying, I've got the plumb line in my hand. What I am showing you is what's the true, straight word. And Israel, you don't measure up. You've allowed injustice to prevail in your own lives and as a nation. Dios muestra con su palabra y su voluntad lo que es recto, lo que es justo. I like in, in uh, Spanish the word for righteousness is the same as justice. Justice is righteousness. Justicia en español significa lo que en inglés se dice righteousness. Hay dos palabras en inglés, righteous and justice. En español tenemos justicia, que significa ambas, amb, ambos significados. Tenemos también la palabra rectitud, ¿verdad? Rectitud, es recto. So we also have in Spanish rectitud, which is straight. It's the way that you see that line fall. It's gravity that pulls the plumb line down. You cannot make a plumb line kind of curve to suit your needs. It shows you what is straight and true. La línea plomada no se puede hacer una curva. No se puede orientar según el gusto, el gusto del constructor. Por gravedad va rectamente con su línea y la plomada. Have you ever seen that leaning tower of Pisa in Italy? It's beautiful of the construction with the columns and the ornamentation when it was first built, absolutely perfect and beautiful. But very soon the foundation shifted and now it's tilted. And it is famous around the world for being a construction project that went wrong. And everybody knows about the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Conoce esa torre en Pisa, en Italia, verdad? Que fue construida tan hermoso esa torre. Pero pronto después de la construcción y la dedicación, 
los fundamentos, los cimientos no eran sólidos y ahora está fuera de plomo, no es recto. So the nation of Israel had gotten out of alignment from God's will. And so the message comes to us this morning, how's the alignment of your life? According to God's word, according to his spirit's work in your life, are you living in alignment with his desires? And are you influencing your community? And are each of us dedicating ourselves to have the kind of nation, the kind of community that where justice prevails, where righteousness is the guide? And it comes from the Lord, not from human philosophy, not from uh, written documents, from history, but from God's holy word and his righteousness. Es la justicia, la palabra eterna de Dios que nos orienta. ¿Qué es correcto? ¿Qué es justo? ¿Qué es correcto? That plumb line, God says, is my word. Look at verse 8, uh, versículo 8. Verse 8, and the Lord asked me, what do you see, Amos? A plumb line, I replied. Then the Lord said, look, I am setting a plumb line among my people, Israel. I will spare them no longer. Versículo 8. Y el Señor me preguntó, ¿qué ves, Amos? Una cuerda de plomada, respondí. Entonces el Señor dijo, mira, voy a tirar la plomada en medio de mi pueblo de Israel. No volveré a perdonarlo. Can you imagine trying to live in a house like this? Puedes imaginar vivir en una casa así? Every time you set down a beverage or a bowl of soup, it's going to slosh uh, onto the floor. Whenever you try to get from point A to point B, you're going to stumble. It's completely out of plumb. It's out of alignment. Imagina viviendo en una casa así, imposible. Poner en, de, en la mesa uh, un vaso de líquido o una cantidad de sopa se va a llegar uh, al suelo y caminando en una casa así imposible se va a caer. This is what, this is a picture of what our lives are like when they're not in alignment with God's will, with God's word. Have you ever felt that way? Maybe you feel that way today. Quizá hoy tienes que reconocer mi vida no está alineado con el plan de Dios. Estoy viviendo en una vida Estoy viviendo una vida que parece una casa así. Maybe your life, the house of your life, looks like that. Sometimes, though, it's a matter of perspective. A veces es una forma de perspectiva. Would you believe that the house is actually straight? It's the hill that it's built on. So if you hold the camera straight, it's really the cars that are parked on the side of the hill, and the house is built right. That's just a trick photography, okay? The house is actually straight. It's the hill that it's built on that's at an incline. So what I'm telling you, don't be fooled by the lies of the world about what's right and what's wrong, but use God's word and his spirit's touching your life to let you know what's the straight and narrow. Deja que la palabra de Dios sea la autoridad. No las filosofías de este mundo, ni el materialismo, ni otras filosofías o influencias, sino la pura palabra de Dios que nos orienta que es recto, justo. So, continuing on with this passage, let's see what happens to Amos. Vamos a continuar con nuestra uh, lectura bíblica y ver qué sucedió al profeta Amos. Verse 9, versículo 9. The high places of Isaac will be destroyed and the sanctuaries of Israel will be ruined. With my sword I will rise against the house of Jeroboam. Versículo 9. Los altares paganos de Isaac serán destruidos y arruinados, y arruinados los santuarios de Israel. Me levantaré con espada contra el palacio de Jeroboam. Paganism, idolatry, something else had taken the right primary place in Israel. It should have been God on the throne of their lives and in control of their nation. But they had allowed pagan gods and uh, idolatry to exist. Los israelitas habían permitido ídolos ocupar lugares santos en, en Israel. Y su, sus santuarios estaban contaminados con paganismo. Verse 10, 
Then Amasiah, the priest of Bethel, sent a message to Jeroboam, king of Israel. Amos is raising a conspiracy against you. Entonces Amasías, sacerdote de Betel, envió un mensaje a Jeroboam, rey de Israel. Amos está conspirando contra ti. So when God's word comes to us, there's lots of different influences or other comparative voices that will come along and say, this is really false. And the way you've been living is the way to go. Hay muchas influencias y voces en nuestro alrededor que contaminan nuestra perspectiva y tratan de influenciarnos que la palabra de Dios no es verdad. No es verdad. Y nuestra forma de vida que preferimos es la forma para continuar. So they, they stir up and can, they accuse God's prophet of participating in a conspiracy against the king when he's just bringing the message of God about how things need to change, how things need to be transformed. El profeta está trayendo un mensaje de cómo las cosas necesitan ser transformados. This is what Amos is saying against you, King Jeroboam. Jeroboam will die by the sword, and Israel will surely go into exile away from their native land. Then, verse 12, then Amaziah said to Amos, Get out of here, you seer. Go back to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there and do your prophesying there. Versículo 11. Jeroboam morirá a espada, e Israel será llevado cautivo lejos de su tierra. Entonces Amasías le dijo a Amos, Largo de aquí, vidente, si quieres ganarte el pan profetizando, vete a la tierra de Judá, no vuelvas a profetizar en Betel. So verse 13, I think is really key. Verse 13. Amasías, que Amaziah, who is the priest, who ought to know better, he's the priest, it says, in Bethel, don't prophesy anymore at Bethel because this is the king's sanctuary and the temple of the kingdom. Versículo 13. No vuelvas a profetizar en Betel porque este es el santuario del rey. Es el templo del reino. As you hear that verse, is there anything that sticks out to you as like, well, that, that's not right. I'll read it again. This is the king's sanctuary and the temple of the kingdom. ¿Qué te parece en ese versículo incorrecto? Versículo 13. No vuelvas a profetizar en Betel porque este es el santuario del rey. Es el templo del reino. I got ahead of myself. All right. So to me what jumps out is that he says, the priest says, this is the king's sanctuary and the temple of the kingdom. No, it's God's sanctuary and it's God's kingdom. The temple, I should say, the temple belongs to God and the sanctuary belongs to God. El santuario pertenece a Dios y el templo pertenece a Dios. So this sanctuary, we talked about that this morning. We're welcomed in to worship him in a safe place. It belongs to God. It doesn't belong to the king. It doesn't belong to any other authority. It doesn't belong to the government. It doesn't even really belong to the Salvation Army, except that it's been entrusted to us by God's grace to use for him. And the temple, you know, in the New Testament, it says, don't you know you're the temple of the Holy Ghost? We each one are a place where God wants to take up residence and be worshipped. We belong to him. El templo pertenece a Dios. En el Nuevo Testamento dice, tú mismo eres el templo de Dios. ¿Por qué? El Espíritu de Dios habite en ti. Y el, el sacerdote, el Betel, lo tenía confundido diciendo que el santuario pertenece al rey y el templo pertenece al reino. No, todo pertenece a Dios. So how does Amos respond to this accusation that he is a, a conspirator against the king? Versículo 14, so verse 14. Amos answered Amaziah, I was neither a prophet nor the son of a prophet, but I was a shepherd. 
and I also took care of sycamore fig trees. Amos responde a la acusación, versículo 14. Amos le respondió a Masías, yo no soy profeta, ni hijo de profeta, sino que cuido ovejas y cultivo higueras. You know who and what you are and where you come from doesn't have to dictate your identity and your future in God. Amos was not a prophet in the past and he wasn't the son of the prophet. He was not, that wasn't a part of his heritage or his background. He was taking care of sheep. He was taking care of fig trees. But then God, I love that phrase, but then God, Versículo 15. Verse 15. But the Lord took me from tending the flock and said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. Versículo 15. Pero el Señor me sacó de atrás del rebaño y me dijo, Ve y profetiza a mi pueblo Israel. The Lord was the one that took him from where he was and what he was doing and set him on a new course. Any of us here today, God can take us from where we are and the course that we've been on and put us on a new course that brings the news to this nation, to this community, to our family, our co-workers, that there is a God with a plumb line that shows us what's the straight and true. It's, I think, significant and a good example that we could use Rosa Parks and this quote that she gives on this Martin Luther King weekend. Ese fin de semana de Martin Luther King, podemos usar esa uh, palabra de Rosa Parks. This is what she's quoted as saying, people always say that I didn't give up my seat because I was tired. Have you heard that before? Rosa stayed in the seat where a uh, part of the bus where she wasn't allowed to be because she was tired and wanted to sit there. I was not physically tired or no more tired than I usually was at the end of a working day. I was not old, although some people have an image of me as being old then. No, the only tired I was, was tired of giving in. Rosa Parks, the civil rights icon, she refused to go along anymore. She was tired of giving in. It's an inspiration to me, and I think Amos was of that same mindset. I'm tired of giving in. I've seen the vision that God gave me of a plumb line showing what's right and say, I'm not going to accept the false perspective of the world, that leaning tower of Pisa they want me to live in, that crooked house that they want me to live in, the, the enemy of our souls. Rather, I'm going to follow God's teaching. I'm going to follow what's right. Voy a seguir lo que es justo. No voy a seguir viviendo en una casa eh, que está falso, que no está bien alineado. Rosa Parks dijo, no estaba cansada solo del trabajo. No era yo anciana. Realmente yo estaba cansada de rendirme a la injusticia. She was tired of giving in to the oppression and the injustice and she was ready to stand up. Another uh, leader in the civil rights today, uh, from, he was an Episcopal priest, William uh, Coffin. It's one thing to say with the prophet Amos, and this is another verse in Amos, let justice roll down like a mighty river. It's quite another thing to work out the irrigation system. How does that river get to flow where those waters are needed? Es una cosa, como dijo Amos, que la justicia corre como un río. Es otra cosa preparar la irrigación, la, la, la forma que los aguas pueden llegar a la gente que tiene sed. You know that hunger is not an issue of charity, it's an issue of justice. And that's what we're about tomorrow as we give food every Monday and as we offer spiritual nourishment throughout the week and on Sundays, it's about justice, it's about God's righteousness. Es la justicia y La rectitud de Dios. The Bible has so much to say about justice, but oftentimes we keep quiet because we don't want to upset the apple cart, as they say. A veces guardamos silencio para proteger la, el, el, el equilibrio cuando realmente necesitamos proclamar la justicia de Dios. 
In Proverbs it says, the righteous care about justice for the poor, but the wicked have no such concern. In Proverbs dice que los justos se preocupan por la rectitud y para justicia para los pobres, pero los malvados no tienen ninguna eh, preocupación por ello. Psalms 82 says we should defend the poor and the fatherless. We should do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Deliver the poor and the needy. Rid them out of the land of the wicked. Defiende los pobres y los que no tienen padres. Haga justicia a los afligidos y los necesitados. And again from Proverbs, speak up for those who can't speak for themselves. Ensure justice for those being crushed. Yes, speak up for the poor and the helpless and see that they get justice. Habla por parte de los que no pueden hablar por sí mismo. Asegura que hay justicia para los que están oprimidos y habla por los pobres y los desamparados. In Isaiah, he says, seek justice, encourage the oppressed, defend the cause of orphans, and fight for the rights of widows. Isaías dice, busca la justicia. Anima a los oprimidos, defiende la causa de huérfanos y pelea, lucha por los derechos de, lo, de las viudas. And so I'll finish with this, termino con este pasaje. Isaiah 58, is not this the fast that I choose, God says, to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the thongs of the yoke, and to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke. Dios dice, este es el ayuno que yo escojo para desatar las cuerdas de la iniquidad y eliminar el yugo de opresión, que los oprimidos salgan libres y que se, bran, que se quebre cada yugo. The dimensions that are at work are societal and they're personal. They're both. It's not either or, it's both and. Las dimensiones de la santidad son múltiples. Es, no es este o el otro. Son ambos, este y el otro. Es personal y es a nivel de la sociedad. God says, I will make justice the measuring line and righteousness the plumb line. Dios dice que yo voy a hacer que la línea que mide la justicia será la línea plomada que es mi palabra. We're going to finish with a, a song that says, My help comes from the Lord. We can't do any of this on our own. We need God's help. Vamos a usar esta música para nuestro nuestra tiempo de respuesta, reflexión. La canción dice, Mi ayuda vendrá del Señor. No podemos hacer todo eso en nosotros mismos. Necesitamos a Dios. In your own heart where you're seated today, make a decision. I invite you to decide, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to measure my life by your word. I'm going to measure my life by your perfect plumb line. And give me grace. Help me, Lord, to live in that alignment. And where I have influence, I'll lift my voice so that we could live in a world, in a country, in a community where righteousness and justice prevail. Vamos a usar este momento y les invito a hacer una decisión hoy y decir, Señor, reconozco que necesito tener mi vida alineada a tu plan, a tu palabra, y necesito tu ayuda. The song says, my help comes from the Lord. Sing along if you know it, if it's one that's familiar to you, Use this music and this time to respond to God.
Father God, we need your help. Thank you for your word that teaches us the way to walk. Help us to walk in that. Gracias, Señor, por tu palabra que nos enseña cómo andar, el camino por seguir. Ayúdanos, Señor, a caminar por ti. Bless us and protect us. Help us this week. Help us to care for one another, to care for our community, and to show justice and mercy. Ayúdanos, Señor, a demostrar justicia y misericordia. Cuidar por nuestra comunidad, por nuestra familia. Thank you for showing us your love. Gracias por demostrar tu amor. In your name we ask. Amen. Amen. Our final announcement is tomorrow again. Anytime between 10 and 3, you're welcome to come. We'll have lessons for kids. We'll have a, a discussion about, um, there's a famous thing that uh, Dr. King wrote called The Letter from Birmingham Jail. It's really incredibly powerful. We'll have a lesson about that. And we're doing volunteer service projects tomorrow. Anytime between 10 and 3. Entre las 10 y las 3 vamos a estar juntos. Wednesday night we've got a few activities from 3 to 6.30. And Bible study at 7. And then January 28th, Friday night, Women's Conference. All the ladies, 6.30 for a teaching session. Then 8 o'clock for fun and fellowship. Sun, a Saturday morning, 10 o'clock, another teaching session. A fellowship meal. And then finishing with a third teaching session at noon. Conferencia Femenina, viernes 28 de enero, 6 y media, viernes por la noche, y 10 de la mañana, el día sábado 29 de enero. On January 30th, in the worship service, we're going to have a special dedication for anyone that wants to pursue uh, learning about becoming a Salvation Army soldier, becoming a recruit in the Salvation Army, learning about our beliefs, our practices, our lifestyle, everything about becoming a Salvation Army soldier, it's open to everyone. There's no requirement that at the end you have to become a member, but if you want to explore that possibility, if you feel like God's been working in your life to say, this is something you should consider, classes are starting soon, and on January 30th, we're going to dedicate our new class of recruits. You could be in that group, and just let me know if it's something you're interested in, and I'll provide you all the details. El domingo 30 de enero habrá una dedicación para nuevos reclutas. Es una recluta, una persona que quiere estudiar, aprender cómo es ser un soldado del ejército de salvación. In March, March 11 to 13, I know Nacho's excited about it. You can go with us, guys, for two nights overnight down to Carlinville, Illinois, the Momentum Territorial Men's Conference. Una conferencia masculino, conferencia de varones, in Carlinville, Illinois, viernes, sábado y domingo, el 11, 12, 13 de marzo. I want to send you forth from here with the blessing. I invite you to please rise if you're able. Les invito a ponerse de pie y quiero enviarles con una bendición en esta mañana. Let us pray. Oremos. God in heaven, we go from here in the confident assurance that we're in your hands. Salimos de este lugar, Señor, con una seguridad que nuestra vida está en tus manos. Guide us, direct us, make us victorious this week by your Spirit. Guíanos, Señor, protéganos y haznos victoriosos en esta semana. Pedimos en tu nombre, in your name we ask. Amen. Amen.